Hi guys, welcome back to the Knitting Expat Podcast video, uh, video cha channel, welcome back to the Knitting Expat Podcast channel, words. Um, good morning, today is Wednesday the 20, 28th of April, I want to say, and I have a couple of packages here that I want to open with you guys, so it's a bit of an unboxing slash this is going to be kind of like a spinning vlog. I think it's just going to be one video, but it might end up being two. We'll see how things go. It's been a while since I've done the spinning vlog, so I thought it'd be really fun to do another one. I've kind of been in a bit of a slump with my knit with my knitting, my spinning for the last couple of months, and um, I just kind of wanted to rectify that. And I thought, you know what, it'd be really fun to. Um, Play with some scrappy stuff and I'll sh talk a bit more about that in a second but before I get into that this year I am co-hosting the fluff to stuff make along with my two of my dearest friends Mars from Hey Brownberry and Grace from Babbles Travelling Yarns uh, links below to information about that if you're interested in taking part it's basically where we take fluff fiber and turn it into stuff so we turn it into yarn first and then turn it into a finished project whatever that may be knitting crochet weaving whatever you want to do with your finished hand spun and so I noticed two of my favorite UK based Etsy shops um, not Etsy shops just fiber shops uh, one is Hilltop Cloud and the other one is Spin Jones both of them recently were selling bundles of like uh, scrappy bits of uh, fiber in bundles and I thought it'd be really fun to get a couple of those sets and make up my own row lags. I might add in some of my own fiber just to kind of have a full fun spin because I feel like, like I said, I feel like I'm in a bit of a slump right now. There's been a lot of stressful things going on in the background and I just need something to clear my mind. So that's what we're gonna do in this vlog. We're gonna unpackage these, take a look at the fibers that I was sent. I'm not entirely sure exactly what I'm getting because it was kind of like a random mixed bag. With Hilltop Cloud, I was able to pick kind of like the color family, um, but with Spin Jones, it's just random. Again, I think there was a bit of a color family with that one as well, but I have no idea what I'm getting. So it'll be interesting to see what I have. And like I said, I might pull some fiber from my stash that I have set aside for blending and using, using on my blending board. And we'll see what we can come up with. I might come up with a few different Rolag options and then um, some of them I'll probably make and use as prizes for the Fluff to Stuff event as well. So, um, so yeah, stay tuned. Then, um, so yeah, then once I've opened this stuff up, we're going to be blending on the blending board and I'll show you how I do that. It's been a while since I've done a blending video. Then we're going to sit down and spin and then I'll show you what the final yarn looks like. So it's going to be a bit of everything in this vlog and, and yeah, so let's get to it. Okay. So let's start with the package from Hilltop Cloud. I don't want to show my address, but. Okay, so I got the Earth Colors mixed bag. Move that out of the way. So it's a carding and felting supply bag. She had a few different color options together in her in, on her shop and I'll leave both the shops linked below if you're interested in checking them out They're, they both produce really lovely fibers and I've enjoyed spinning products from both of them so let's see what we have in here okay so we have a bundle of just random bits I think this is probably mostly merino uh, feels like merino in all sorts of lovely sort of yellows and greens sort of colors we have two little bundles of tussa silk so these are each 20 grams each in citron and ivy so again very in keeping with the color theme as i was expecting and two little five gram bundles of silk throasters waste so this is good for adding sort of like texture and stuff into your spins uh, i may or may not include these in these row that i make depending on what we do um I don't know, I find if you're adding these in, you're gonna get very textured, lumpy yarns because you're not gonna be able to spin this smoothly. So if you're going for more of like an art yarn or a thick and thin kind of look, then these are great. But otherwise, um, I might leave those out depending on what I wanna go for in the end. But yeah, definitely like liking this color combo. And I definitely have some other colors in my stash that would go well with these that I may, may throw in or not depending on how things go. There's decent chunks of 
fibre in here of each of these different colours. So definitely a lot to play with in this bundle. So that's that's going to be fun. And this one is from Spin Jones. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I also bought a braid from her as well while I was at it. So there's a couple of things in here. Oh, lovely. Did I get two? I thought I only got one. Now I'm confused. Okay, yeah, no mistake. I did actually order two. I just forgot somehow that I did that. Okay, so this one is 100 grams of what she calls bat food. So it's mixed scrap fibres in these colours, <laughs> greens, purples, turquoises, etc. And this one is also a mixed scrappy bag of fibre from, but this is all South Down fibre. Whereas this is mixed fibres, this is just South Down. And the one thing I like about Spin Jones is her packaging for the most part is biodegradable. So these plastic bags are compostable, which is great, um, environmentally speaking. And, uh, and yeah, that's those two bundles, which will be really fun to play around with. Now I've heard South Down is actually really good for uh, spinning sock yarn. Down breeds in general are considered great for sock yarn. So I'm excited to try that out, potentially for some socks. Then this is the braid I got. Which is like an... which if I'm not mistaken, this is also South Down. Yes, so this is um south down wool the colorway is n-i-f-w-l not sure what that's supposed to stand for um and it doesn't have a yeah so this is the colorway it's like pinky pink grays pinky purples turquoises and like a purpley blue at the end there so it's kind of like a mirrored mirror dyed gradient it's definitely not the soft softest wool but it would be i can see how why this is going to be good for socks it's quite spongy feeling but it's also um it's fairly coarse uh it's definitely not like something i would want next to actually it's not that bad next to skin around the neck i thought it'd be a lot rougher uh but it doesn't feel that bad next to the skin but it feels a little bit more coarse than um a merino probably more somewhere along the lines of like a uh Corydale or BFL like sometimes or maybe I don't know ignore me it's just coarser than a merino but it's not actually that bad touching it I thought it'd be a lot more itchy but actually when I put it up to my neck it's not not that rough at all and there's also a little um a little sample in here as well let me just see what oh, this little thank you card in there which is really sweet oh, i love this picture i saw this on her instagram uh, it's just a really fun photo and so there's a sample of pip and branwen so a couple of blended tops which is said to be sample so that's great and yeah so that's all the yummy fiber that i have so this obviously isn't going to be part of the stuff that i blend i will be spinning this as it is but these are all a fair game for some blending fun that's going to be happening later and yeah so right now i actually have to go do something else work related but i'll be back later today for you guys it will be like a second from now and we will get to doing some blending because that'll be fun all right guys so i'm back i'm going to voice over this next part just because otherwise we'd be sat here forever um, so what I first did, I took the fibre from Hilltop Cloud, I put it out, poured it out, um, I think I added a couple of other random bits of fibre from my carding stash, and uh, yeah, so here I am just laying on some fibre onto my homemade blending board. I do actually have a video where I show how I made my blending board, so I will try and remember to include a link to that below this video in the description box if i do forget and you're having trouble finding it please let me know in the comments and i'll go ahead and add the link to that for you at this point i realized i had too many colors so i sort of divided up the fiber i had into two bundles for two slightly different color stories so one is slightly warmer with more orangey 
and orangey colours and yellows and the other one is slightly cooler with some darker greens and um, and things like that so I end up doing two different batches of Rolags in this video so this is the first sort of colour um, colour scheme that we that I went with and I'm just sort of laying on the different fibres um, across the board some of them more evenly spread others in patches and then using uh, what is actually a pet brush <laughs> to brush it down and then I just use two knitting needles uh, to pull off the row legs as you can see there I use my thumb to brace against the bottom of the board to pull it off um, and yeah I get around four to five row legs from each uh, full blending full board of fiber just depends how I how thick I make the row legs so in this case I got five row lags off of it and uh, and yes yeah, so that was the first batch then I did up another batch with the second sort of set of colors that I pulled together so this one's a little bit more higher contrast because there's some of that like lime yellow and that really light green uh, tussle silk that I've just added on there now along with the darker greens and it's almost like a black green it's so dark the darkest color and again, just laying it on in strips um, across the board and brushing it down every now and again to make sure it gets, um, what's the word, embedded into the grooves of the carding cloth before I start to pull the fibre off again. So again, just using the knitting needles to pull off the row lags, as you can see there. I think my video cuts out here for a second really quickly before I remember to turn it back on again. But I think I got four row lags off that time. There we go. And uh, I actually did two more batches of each of those row lags as well. And uh, the warmer colours I actually end up spinning later in this video. The cooler colour, the second batch that you just saw me make is um, going to be part of a prize draw for a future Fluff to Stuff uh, prize giveaway. And what I'm doing now is I am blending up some fibre from Spin Jones this time. This is what she called her bat food. And so what I decided to do was just to create some mini bats on my blending board. And I really enjoyed doing this. The bats come out anywhere from 30 to 40 grams in weight. And uh, so yeah, they're really nice little bundles. And I, and I ended up making three of these mini bats with all of the fibre that I had from Spin Jones and that bundle of three mini bats you can see there I'm just pulling it off with the road with the knitting needles I'm just not pulling them off as Rolex I pull it off as a, as a whole sheet and then um, yes yeah, so this I made three of these and uh, so these three are going to be another prize bundle for fluff to stuff as well which you can win in the future <laughs> I'm not sure when these will be or what month these will be a prize for or when but they will be a future prize at some point and here I am I'm making up another bat um, so yeah I just you know been going through a bit of stress recently and uh, thankfully all of that is coming to an end now or by the time you see this video it should have come to an end um, and and yeah so this is the second one I'm making up by the time this one finishes um, I finished making up this bat this mini bat I didn't realize but my camera battery died so I ended up doing the third one off camera I didn't record it but I wanted to show you the process of making the mini bats is basically exactly the same as for the Rolex it's just instead of pulling it off as a Rolex in smaller chunks around the knitting needles and pulling it and um, pulling it tight around the needles I kind of just pull it all off as one sheet of fiber from the board and then roll it out this is in real time this section roll out take out the knitting needles and then I fold up the bottom and fold down the top just to keep get, keep the edges neat and then I just roll it up from one side to create that little uh, what you call it like Swiss roll type of shape all right so that was the fiber blending portion of this video. I hope you found that interesting to watch. Um, next up, we are going to do some spinning. So it's been a while since I've uh, done much in the way of spinning. So this first section is in real time, so you can get a better idea of how I'm getting myself set up. 
So my uh, my leader yarn was a little bit tangled around my flyer. So yeah, I'm just putting it around the hooks and using my um, orifice hook to pull the leader through the orifice and tightening up my tension, my brake um, brake string. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the brake. Uh, brake band. There we go. Words. All right. So here's the row lag. And one way that you can spin a row lag is by pre-drafting it first. This can be quite handy, especially if you're new to spinning with row lags, because sometimes it, they can come out, the fiber can come out in chunks. I really like spinning with row lags because, especially as a beginner, it was a great way to get a hang of spinning um, with a more woolen type of prep. Plus, it's... Um, I found as a beginner that row lags allowed me to get a very, uh, it made it easier for me to get a thinner spin. Not necessarily consistent because it can get a little bit lumpy depending on the content and stuff like that, but the um, it allowed me to get overall a much thinner spin early on in my spinning journey so it was very encouraging and I still enjoy the process of spinning from row lags. I'm not super um, concerned about having like very consistent yarn or anything like that so I'm happy to kind of just go with the flow a lot of the time I know some people who are very specific and want like super consistent yarn or are aiming for super consistent yarn find Rolex a little bit tedious I personally really love it I definitely think it's worth giving it a go if you've never used a Rolex before for spinning plus they're also really handy for hand spinning because they're nice small amounts of fiber so here I am just doing a um, mostly a short forward draw. I sort of mix it up between short forward and short back draw. Um, at the moment, the way my camera is set up, I'm trying to keep my hands on camera. And um, so I'm actually spinning quite close to the orifice and I don't normally spin that close to the wheel. I usually sit back a bit more with a bit more space between the wheel and my hands. Um, so I think in a second I sort of rejig my setup in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you how I do that. So this is a little bit more like how I would normally, even here is still a little bit close. But I sort of just short forward draw. And every now and again, if I come up to a bit where there's a, like I feel like a clump of fibre has come out and it's not as um, evenly uh, drafted as I would like, I kind of just move my left hand up and help attenuate that a little bit to thin it out and make it, I think you'll see it here, where that happens and then my left hand so the hand that's further back I'll move that up to help sort of even out the drafting a little bit where it gets a little bit chunky um like I said I'm not super worried about it oh okay so here I am at the end of a row lag and I'll show you how I join the next one I didn't pre-draft the rest of the row lags I just did it for the first one to show you I don't really do it that often so I just hold the wispy ends of the row lag up against the fiber I've already spun and as I start spinning it catches those wispy ends and you just start spinning from there and it kind of just joins on pretty seamlessly. Um, it takes some practice but I never found it to be too too difficult to do and uh, yeah I think here there'll be a bit where I will help attenuate some of the fiber with my other hand so you can see I'm not sure I do have a section where you <laughs> where I show that in this video so hopefully it will come up soon. If it's not in this section, it'll be in the next one. So it's a little bit sped up because, like I said, otherwise we'd be sat here for a very long time. <laughs> um, I did actually end up doing this spin all in one day. It wasn't a huge amount of fibre. I think overall um, there were like nine row lags in total. And I think it was probably around 60-ish grams. I haven't actually done the final measurements and weights yet for the skein. I've it's been packed up so I haven't had a chance to do that yet all right so here is where we're gonna where I show you see so right about here I pull out a big chunk of fiber there we go and I pull up my other hand to pull it out a little bit and thin it out so that's what I do if I end up getting a huge chunk of fiber come up out of the row lag I kind of just use my other hand to come and pull it back a bit to draft it a bit more finely that was what I was trying to explain earlier, so hopefully that helped. Um, and here I am, sat down, ready to ply, and I just noticed my leader is not joined anymore. Uh, so I'm tying a knot there. 
but yeah sorry about the bad lighting in this latter section of the video I would have normally waited to record this the next day but I just knew I wasn't going to have time to do this the day after um, I spun the single so I just sat down and did it that evening so I have an onboard lazy cage for my spinning wheel I don't think I mentioned this my wheel is a Kromsky Sonata spinning wheel and it has an onboard lazy cage for two bobbins so that's why I ply this way round. I don't mind. I'm not super fussed about which hand I which way round my hands are for plying. I have it this way where my left hand is leading the plying because my lazy cake is on the right side of my wheel. If it was the other way round, I would just do it the other way. But when I'm spinning my singles, my right hand is my um is the forward hand. Whereas when I'm plying, my left hand is the forward hand. So I kind of just flip-flop between the two. <laughs> I don't have a real preference for one or the other when it comes to um, plying. But I do, one thing I do, and you would have seen it earlier, and you'll probably see it in the next clip, that um, I keep the two strands of the singles separated when I'm holding it in my hand by going over two different fingers. So that stops the strands from getting all tangled up as I am plying which is pretty handy and uh, and yeah there again I'm sort of spinning quite plying rather this time quite close to the orifice again to keep it all on camera normally I would sort of sit back and I would have much more space between my hands and the wheel but um, I didn't want it to be off camera. I wanted you to actually see what I was doing with my hands at this point. So this is sped up this section because there again um, it took a couple of hours to do all the plying at this point okay so I wound off the yarn once it was done and then I did wait and film this last little section the morning after before we had to head out um, so this is what it looks like on the nitty noddy um, and like I said I haven't done the final measurements or anything for this yet but it was just a for fun spin it was just really nice to see how all the colors sort of blended together from the row lag to the finished yarn and this is the finished skein again it still needs to be washed and set and measurements done for it but I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out so I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys again very soon alright take care bye